separable differential equations. As separable, we kind of did this already actually. Differential equation can be expressed as the product of a function of x and y. So dy equals g of x times h of y. So do you see there are two different functions based on one has to do with y, one has to be x. So this is where our cross-multiplying action will uh, work pretty good here. Um, the solution can be fi found by anti... Ooh, I can't even spell anti. Anti-differentiating... Eating each side with respect to its isolated variable. So we're going to solve for y. So does everybody see I have dy over dx equals 2xy squared. So we're going to get all the y's to one side, all the x's to another. So do you see that I can take this? Like I said, I, I trained you well with cross-multiplying, so the cross-multiplying action hopefully will come into play. We'll do a switcheroo, do you see? The y squared go down here and the dx goes here and I get 2x dx, yes? Um, so it says we're separating the variables. This is what's called a separable um, differential equation, meaning we can separate the x's from the y's. You'll see that when you do a Khan Academy because it'll say, is this a separable yes or no? That's the, the yeah. Well, it's yes or no. And so, of course, we assume that y squared can equal 0 in order for us to do this, because otherwise we're doing a really bad thing. So, after we do this, we are going to anti-differentiate each side. So, I don't like the y squared in the bottom, so do you want to write it as y to the power of negative 2? So, y to the power of negative 2 dy equals 2x dx. So we're basically going to throw an integral into both sides, right? That's, that's what I'm saying. We're going to anti-differentiate. Whatever I do on one side, it's just like algebra. We're going to do the other side. You see that? So what's the anti-derivative of y to the power of negative 2? Yeah. So you add 1, so negative 1, and then multiply reciprocal, so negative y. Yes? Everybody good? And of course, nobody said plus C? Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. So once you do this once, we're not going to do it more than once, but I'm going to put C1 because there's going to be a C on both sides, and then we're just going to... What's the antiderivative of 2x? x squared... And so do you see a C2? We're not going to do this anymore because you'll see if I move the C's over to one side, they kind of just meld into one C. So most people just don't even put a C on this side and they just put it on this side because they know that in a second it's basically going to be this, right? We don't know what the C's are. We're just going to add or subtract them. We have some C. Who cares what it is? Blah, blah, blah. Does everybody see? Okay, we need to solve for y. That's the whole point here, right? Solve for y. So what would I do next? Okay, so before you do that, I'm just going to show you that this y to the power of negative 1 is negative 1 over y equals x squared plus c. Does everybody see that? So exactly what... Um, Mike, the new guy, who's that guy? We do a switcheroo here, and we'll get, do you see if the y goes up here and the x squared plus c goes here? So I'll get y equals negative 1 over x squared plus c. Yeah? That's it. Yeah. Okay, so here's another separable um, equation. Does everybody see I can do the switcheroo and I can get the y's on one side and the x's on the other side? Yeah? So, I'll give you a second. You, you rewrite it with the, the x's on one side and the y's on the other. Okay. 
So. Would, would you always put the Y, whatever the Y goes to the bottom, would you always put that to the negative one exponent? Or negative whatever exponent? Would you always do that? Like that 1 plus y squared, would you put all of that to the negative 1 exponent to make it all the sort of self yeah. Like, would you always do that? You're talking about this last one? Yeah. Well, it's easier to handle powers rather than, yeah. OK, so did you get that when you manipulated around? OK, so ooh, this might be a little challenging one. Who recognizes the left side? Inverse tan, isn't it? Inverse tan, very good. Yeah, so. OK, so this is inverse tan equals. You got to recognize that. That's definitely a question that could be there. Um, can anybody recognize the U substitution you might want to do on scrap paper? Or can you look at it and you can tell that this is already going to be? Huh? Well, yeah, the U would be x squared. OK, I'm going to do this on this side. I'm not going to do it there. I'm going to do it on this side. If U is x squared, at some point, you're going to not even do this, right? Like, is anybody at the at the part that they already know that this is just e to the power x squared? No. Okay, so then I'm sure. <laughs> so this is. Oh, it's true. It's true. So this is du equals two x dx, right? So this is the the integral of two x e to the power x squared dx would be. So this this is this part, right? So this is the integral of e to the power u du, which is just e to the power u, right? plus c. So this is e to the power x squared plus c. OK, that's good. <laughs> okay, here's, here's the kicker now. How do I get y by itself? Um, so it's tan, tan, both tan both sides. Very good. At tan, we'll undo an inverse tan, and we're left with y equals tan of e to the x squared plus c. And I would say the same thing here. This c could be outside, because tan of a number is still a number, blah, 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 blah. So just leave it like this. But yeah, it wouldn't be wrong to have the c outside as well. OK. Recall from lesson 7.1a. That was a long time ago. <laughs> a differential equation with a, an initial condition is called an initial value problem. It has a unique solution called the particular solution to the differential equation. In examples 1 and 2, the answer is the general solution, because it had that plus c in there, right? We didn't know what c was. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to give you some initial conditions so that you can solve what c is to find the actual particular differential, a solution to the differential equation. OK, so what should we do first here? Yeah. So I don't know if you want to do the first step and actually write this as x squared, y squared. Yeah, OK, I'm going to do that. You don't have to, but I'm going to show my steps. OK, now I'm going to do a switcheroo. So dy over y squared equals x squared over dx. Sorry, what am I doing? Try that again, dx. <laughs> um, uh, and by the way, you can skip some steps here and write this as y to the power of negative 2, so you're right on in there. It's up to you, whatever. So I'm going to write it as y to the power of negative 2 dy. That just skips a step, maybe a second or two when you're solving and you, have, you need time, right? So we're going to integrate both sides. It's all about time, man. Integrate both sides. What do we get? Add 1 y to the negative 1 with a negative y equals, what do we get here? 1 third x cubed plus c. 
<laughs> it does, actually. Um, so then I have negative 1 over y equals 1 third x cubed plus c. Um, so, so, so listen, I would not try to necessarily attempt um, y equals at this time. At, at this point, I would just plug her in, right, the initials. Now I'm going to put initial in so I can solve what c is, and then I would solve for y. So, um, so does everybody see 1 goes in there? I get negative 1 equals 1 third plus c. Okay, I'm going to move the one-third over, and then I'll get negative four-thirds equals C. So now I'll go back to this. Negative one over Y equals one-third X cubed minus four over three. You could probably put it all together and then do a, a whole little cross there. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Because of this y and we have to do a switcheroo here, you have to have one fraction here. So negative 1 over y equals the whole thing. So this would be x cubed minus 4. Does everybody agree that that would be that if I smoosh it all together? <laughs> so then I'll just go whoop, 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 and then I get y equals... You can put the negative 3 on top. It's, it depends on where you want to put that. And then I get x cubed minus 4 there. So. Alrighty. You want to try the next one? So this this will be your, by the way, this will be your one, part of your response questions now, right? Um, where it says solve the differential and then find the solution that satisfies the condition. Okay, so you guys want to try it? Switcheroo. So do you know that this is a separable differential? So when you do the Khan Academy, it'll say, is this a separable whatever? So if you can do the switcher, like the cross multiply switcheroo, and you can get all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other side, that's a separable. Okay, if you can't, and you can't do any kind of manipulation to get it that way, then it's not. But you can watch the video if you don't understand. But um, So this is kind of nice, isn't it, hey? You get 2y plus cos y equals 6x squared dx. Then you don't have anything at the bottom like that, right? Oh, I don't know where the dy went. I got to... Sorry about that. I'll try that again. dy plus cos y dy. Sorry, I said 2y. You know what I'm saying. Okay, what was the question? Yes, it's supposed to. Because that's how you're going to integrate, right? These have to be here in order to integrate, right? Because this is integrating with respect to y. This is integrating with respect to x, right? Yeah, there you go. So what do we get for 2y? What do we get for 2y? y squared. Woo. What do we get for cos y? Sine y. Is it plus or minus? Plus or minus? Plus, right? And if you don't remember, everybody thinks, I think they everybody knows when the derivative of sine is cos, so. Anyways. And so then what? 2x to the power of 3 plus c. All right. Yeah, so we're the problem the problem is is we, we can't really get things going until we actually use this um, initial condition. So if y01 is pi, what do we get there? What do we get? Pi squared plus sine of pi plus to, sorry, equals equals 2 times 1 cubed plus c, which is a sine of pi. Does everybody know? Zero. 
So then I get pi cubed minus 2 equals c. What's wrong? Oh, I'm losing it today, I tell you. <laughs> Therefore, y squared plus sine y equals 2x cubed plus y squared minus 2. Okay, let's get the last one done. Switch your route. Second last one. We have three more. We have four more. Okay. Let's get going. Step it up then. Cross multiply. Y dy equals negative x dx. One half y squared equals negative one half x squared plus c. Initial conditions, bada bing, bada boom, sub are in. So 3 goes in for y, I get 9 over 2 equals 0 goes in. Does everybody see I get 9 over 2 for c? Oh, yeah, because 0, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I get 1 half y squared equals negative 1 half x squared plus 9 over 2. Does everybody understand I could just multiply everything by 2? And it goes away. So I get y squared equals negative x squared plus 9. I got to solve for y. Three. We're going to square root. You have to remember when you square root, you get plus or minus. Okay? Now here's the, and I don't know if anybody remembers, I did this before. You have to test the, conditional, the initial condition. It has to work. So you must test initial condition. So the initial condition, remember, was that. You need to put, plug it in. I'm running out of room, sorry. So I'm going to get 3 equals, I'm going to test the plus 1. Is that the square root of negative 0 squared plus 9? Does that work? Yes. What about when I plug it into the negative? 3 equals negative square root negative 0 squared. That's a square plus 9. Does that work? No. So therefore, y just equals the positive negative x squared plus 9. Does everybody see what I did there? So again, this will be part of the process, and if you don't do the test, you don't have to show the test, but you have to show that you get two solutions and you bring it down to one, and more than likely, it's usually the, the negative square root because most people will fluke the, fluke the answer and just get the positive with, by not realizing that you have two solutions. You know what I'm saying? So more than likely, it's usually the negative one. So... Find the particular solution to this. So, whoo, what do we do there? Well, the dx has to go up there, right? So, we're going to have dy over the square root of y equals dx over 16 plus x squared. So this is going to be y to the power negative a half dy equals, and if you want, I'm going to put the dx and have it as 1 over. Now, this looks like what in disguise? Tan. Kind of. We have to manipulate it gravely, and this will be on your test. We have to take, we have to take a 1 over 16 out of there. Would also affect the x squared, would it not? And then we'll do u substitution. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do this on this side here, okay? So I'm going to have the integral of dx over, and this is, I'm going to make this 1 plus uh, x squared over 16. And then I'm going to have this 1 16 out. Okay, so does everybody see this is the same thing? You have to do a few of these um, 
that you, you got to get used to it, right? So now it's still not in tan form. Tan form needs to have this whole thing squared. So I need to make this a 4. So this is going to be 1 over 16 dx over um, 1 plus x over 4 squared. Now that looks like tan form. 1 plus something squared. Now it's good tan form, right? Inverse tan form. Do you know what I'm talking about? So now it's ready for u substitution. So u is going to be x over 4, du is going to be, well, 1 fourth dx, yes? So that means 4 du equals dx. Is everybody good with that? So 1 over 16, the integral dx is going to replace with 4 du. I'm just going to put the 4 du on top, and this will be 1 plus u squared. So does everybody see the 4 and the 16 it can cross cancel, and I get 1 quarter inverse tan of u? Yes? Yeah? I guess you could say plus c if you want. Um, and of course the u, there is no u over there, so this is really 1 quarter inverse tan of x over 4 plus c. Now, just so you know, there is a couple of uh, things that you can, you know how I said you can memorize the integral of tan x and put it on your little card? You can actually memorize um, it making this a u so that you know, as soon as you find your u, you can go directly to this. So... Um, anyways, where am I? I got to go back over here. I'm just going to write this. Okay, so what's the antiderivative of y to the power negative a half? So add one. So two, yeah, yeah. Two. And then what do we get on this side? This whole conglomerate, right? So equals 1 quarter inverse tan of x over 4 plus c. So again, I would never try to um, solve for y before I solve the c because it's a way easier. Um, so let's solve the c. So y of, so we're going to put the initial condition in, right? So y is... 1, so we get 2 on that side, equals 1 quarter. Um, inverse tan of 0 is 0 plus C. So does everybody see you get C as 2? Well, we still got to test the initial, right? So then we get 2 square root Y equals 1 quarter um, inverse tan of X over 4 plus 2, right? We good so far? So we can divide both sides by 2. Yes? So we get the square root of y equals 1 eighth inverse tan of x over 4 plus 1. And then how do I get y by itself? Square both sides. So y equals 1 eighth inverse 10 of x over 4 plus 1, the whole thing squared. And then I would test my initial condition. Test 0, 1. So 0 goes in for x. Inverse 10 of 0 is 0, 0 times 1 eighth is 0, plus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so it d does test, so this is in fact my solution. Do you like that stuff? Yeah. It's kind of nice. This unit's kind of not too bad, hey? I think the hardest part is the u substitution, but once you get used to that, it's... <laughs> Nobody else got a joke there. That's okay. <laughs> I thought it was used to that. <laughs>
Okay, so find the particular solution. So I have lots of examples here. Let's just do it again, do it again. Ooh, this is kind of interesting, hey? So we go, what do we get? There's no S. Oh my gosh, what do we do? It's just a what? Come on, people, think. Can we flip the DS over two no, we're still going. Yeah, there's a one there. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> so you can, you can just put DX. If you want, you can put a one there so you feel better. But really, do you need one? You want me to put a one? I'll put a one if you really want. Okay. <laughs> okay, do you recognize this? What is it? The left side. What is it? It's it's inverse tan, yeah. <laughs> By the way, with the inverse trig, the most common is inverse tan and inverse sine. You'll see that over and over and over again. So if you want in your back pocket the other ones, but for sure you need to have inverse tan and inverse uh, sine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and what's the antiderivative of dx? Yeah, plus c. So? Yeah, you hope I ask you that on the testing. Oh, you know what? I I think I think I want to I I went against my 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 first suggestion cuz it was going to be too hard if I don't do it this way. So now I'm going to put 0 in inverse tan as 0 is I'll just write it out. Inverse tan as 0 equals 1 plus c. So what is c equal? Negative 1. So that means um, I'm going to write here inverse tan of y equals x minus 1. So then what is tan equal? Or y equal, sorry. Yeah, tan of x minus 1. There you go. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to. So we're going to put 1 in, tan is 0, 0. Yeah. You know, usually it's when you square both sides or square root both sides, something's going to weird happen that it doesn't work. Yeah. This one's my last example, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys want to try the last one? Ooh, this one's a gooder. This is a gooder. All you have to do is get rid of this y and there, right? So y dy equals 1 plus x over x. I'm going to put the dx over here. It has no place on the top there. Um, so, does everybody know what to do when you have an integral of 1 plus x over x? You should. Yeah, you need to bring the x up. So, y dy equals 1 over x. So, x to the minus 1 plus 1 dx. Yes? Does everybody know what I did there? You could split it into two integrals for sure. Actually, I kind of like leaving it as 1 over x instead of x to the minus 1. Is that okay? I know somebody's going to complain I'm erasing. Uh, 1 over x plus 1. Why do I like that better? Because it's way noticeable that this is now the logarithm, right? Natural logarithm, for sure. We don't even talk about the other logarithm in calculus. It's always the natural logarithm. It is. Because it's so naturally occurring. Come on. That was good. <laughs> it's so natural. Okay. Anyways, what, what is the antiderivative of y? Okay, and so then what's the antiderivative of 1 over x? Log of the absolute value of x, and what is the antiderivative? Plus x, plus c. It does say x is greater than 0, so that's a good thing, right? 
It also says this. So we're now going to solve what C is. So negative 4 goes in. Square root of 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Ln of 1. OK, is everybody good if I just put 0? Ln of 1 is 0? Plus, it's zero, no. sir, it was zero. I don't know why I put <laughs> plus one plus C. Does everybody remember why ln of one is zero? No. No. Ln of one. Remember, there's an e, and you're trying to find e to the power what equals one. Zero. Yeah, it would be e to the power of zero is one. So that's why e, ln of one is zero. Okay. So then we get 7 equals C. 7 equals C. So we get 1 half Y squared equals LN of X plus X. Well, I, because, it says, because it says in the question it's greater than 0, I can get rid of the absolute value now. So I'm going to now multiply everything by 2. Does everybody know that 2 ln is really what? Sorry, 2 ln x is really ln of x squared. OK, so I'm running out of room here. I apologize. y equals plus or minus the square root of ln x squared plus 2x plus 14. We got a test. Uh, 1 comma negative 4. Does everybody see that the plus will not work, but the minus will? OK, so I'll give you a second there. Well, yeah, and the reason why I knew that ahead of time is because, like Josh said, because the y is negative 4 and you're square rooting, that's the only way it'll actually exist, right? Make sense? But test it just to verify. But That's a guaranteed test question where you have to test it, reject one, yada, yada.